Welcome back to Mobility Wad. We are going to take you on an adventure with Matt Vincent, uh, our good friend. You've seen him on the show a few times. Sneak around. Now you are, how, how many weeks out on the knee are you? I'm eight weeks out of the most recent surgery. Most recent, you've been collecting them. Like, yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. You get, you get a punch card, and after like five, I think they knock you out a free one. Buy three, get them all free. Yeah, so all right, right, so here's what we're doing today. I want to talk about a different way of looking at the squat and squat mechanics. Now, one of the things that we believe strongly in, besides all of the you know aspects of taking care of the surgery, is that if you have had a knee injury, and once you get, start to clear to move and you can range, we want to squat a lot every day. And one of the things we're always trying to do is derive greater consilience in practice. I want to simplify practices. I want to make sure that one thing is covering many items at once so that your rehab doesn't become a part-time job. Right. Right? I can be with my wife Ashley or I can do these rehab exercises. Right. right. Do both. Do both. Both. You can you can have you can have it all. So what I want to talk about today is a way of actually that we use to teach squatting to young kids. And it's also a way of us moving beyond what your knee should be doing in the squat. Because the knee is really just a red herring for what's happening with the ankle mechanics. So what we can do is, is we can use the foot as a model to predict or to, to as a model of positioning and then the athlete can start to have feeling about how much torsion they need to create based on maintaining position. So a lot of times what happens is you know, we're like, shove your knees out, well how far out? Well a long time ago when we started having this conversation in public, I was like, hey look, you need to push the knee out far enough to maintain the integrity of your foot system. Mm. And everyone's like, yeah, 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 right. But they, they didn't really get kind of gr trust me on it, and we didn't get granular on it, and that was a mistake. So let me get granular on this. And what I want to do is identify what we're thinking is, is a good, stable arch, good, stable functional foot position, and then we can use the squatting rehab template as a behavior modification change so I can rebuild behaviors. I can use it as motor control. I can use it as a way of strengthening my feet and reinforcing these, these good positions. Also, because one of the things we're trying to do with that knee joint is unload hot sides, low sides, we're trying to put it so I'm weight-bearing in the center of the joint, centrating that, that force to the center of the joint, having a stable foot platform is vital to that, that conversation. That if I'm collapsed, what ends up happening is I end up sending force vectors through the knee, and I start to see wonkiness through the whole chain which is one of the reasons we have really sometimes really tight adductors or lateral leg gets tight. So here's what squatting should look like, and we can define our terms. So if we look down at Matt's feet, don't move. We gotcha. This is the inside of Matt's foot here, and this is his navicular bone sticking out the side of his foot. And you'll notice... That's the flap. The sparkles. The flap. The extra flap. Now, what I want you to look at, and you've come this way, Dave, you can see that his ankle has a bias towards the middle of his foot. So if you swing around this way forward, you can see that his ankle is more on the inside of his foot than on the outside of the foot. Can you see that there's more mass on the outside of the foot? You look down see that? Yep. So what I'm going to have Matthew do is get his feet straight, just like all athletes, and then I want him to put his ankle in the middle of his foot. So if he looks down now, he can suddenly look down and see that his ankle joint is now centered, even just give me a little bit more, right in the middle of his foot. So now that this is what we call subtalar neutral, look at the arch that he's been able to create organically, and he hasn't gone too far out and not too far in. He can look down and say, is my ankle joint centered over the middle of the foot? That is our definition of a good mechanic. So what we're doing here is we're now cueing all the intrinsics of the feet because as we know when you're in a bad position it's hard to get things turned on. Mm -hmm. When I'm in a good position my body works a little bit better, that positional inhibition concept. So now go ahead and collapse back and you can see he's now sending his energy laterally through the leg, dropping through and this is where we're gonna, we would see kind of impingement like problems. Turn around for us real quick. To sit in that kind of collapsed position for me. And one of the things is the difference is you see how in, right now his Achilles comes down and kind of swings laterally. Go ahead and pick up your foot and put your ankle in the middle of the position. And now we have a little bit more verticality in the Achilles. In the really pronounced cases, what will end up happening is that the navicular bone will drop, go and really collapse and exaggerate, and we start to see the, the Achilles comes down, takes a, a big turn. So our idea here is, hey, I can optimize force vectors through the, through the ankle, I can put the knee into a better position, I can begin to account for all of that connective tissue and fascia, go and turn back around. And more importantly, my athletes now have a, a way of understanding and assessing 
ready position their squat. So if he's going to unload the bar, I want him to unload and start that position by putting his feet in the middle of the ankle. Now this is one of the things that we'll do, and give me a little bit less, right? I should be able to be weight bearing evenly from the sort of met heads, the metatarsal heads to the heel, and that center of mass falls somewhere slightly in front of the ankle. So he can now become aware of shifting that weight forward or shifting it back so that he's evenly weighted from the heel to the foot and that that ankle remains stable in the middle of his foot. So weight yourself so you're evenly through the ball to the heel. Now I've had a conversation about quads and hamstrings working in synergy. And remember that the way the foot works is that if we look at the big toe, in ballet terms, this is called the, the toe foot. So in this aspect of the toe foot, we have a lot of heavy quad domination. This is called the heel foot. So functionally, from these four toes back to the heel is functionally one unit. In fact, when you land, you land when running, you land somewhere in this aspect of your foot and roll towards the middle, which is actually contacting heel first. So when we see people squat and collapse and go heavy on a toe, don't mess up your knee, what they're really doing is they've lost the heel foot and we start to see hamstrings turn off. We start to see a lot more quad dominant movements and we can't reclaim that heel because the structure isn't balanced and organized in a way where the hamstrings and posterior chain can work. Likewise, we see people squat and what do they want to do? Lift that squat so far to the outside of your foot. We see this all the time in the crazy squat and this now has shut off your quadriceps. So we start to see lots of ugly issues. So if you're seeing people squat on the outside of their feet, lifting the toe up off the ground, ankles not centrated, that's too far out, right? Now, I don't even have to cue what to do with the knee. All I can talk about is, hey, let's keep this ankle in the middle of the foot. Let's decide, look down, there it is, it's in the middle of the foot. Now, Matt's feet are a little bit, let's just say flatter than we'd like, <laughs> right? Yeah, like they're, earth. <laughs> they're earth. It's like, it's like middle earth, we'll call your feet. Yeah. But one of the things is that, we know that we can always be putting input, and even if we stretched out some of the ligaments and tendons, we can reclaim the fascia, we can reclaim the musculature, and build the intrinsics, right? We can make the foot a little bit stronger, and some of this is awareness. So I want Matt to cruise around and try to look down, maintain the ankle in the middle of the foot. Now, Matt does a good job. He wears flat shoes. He wears shoes with a heel. Like, you're always kind of thinking about this. Yep. What's nice about this concept around teaching squatting and reinforcing squatting is now I have feet that are working really hard all the time, and I don't have to do what I would call less effective use of my time exercises like foot strengthening exercises, right? right. I want you to deadlift and squat and move and stand, but we're going to try to maintain this foot. So you'll notice that he's kind of stretching his feet out because they, they're working hard, right? right? Okay, weak feet. So here's the deal. Foot straight again. And one of the things that we've done is we've talked about what we call the 27 squats. And it's a way of priming the hip, priming ranges of motion so that my brain understands and can account for a full hip range of motion internally and externally and in a lunge shape. So typically what we do is we'll do three squat shapes. We'll say squat that, so stand up for me. We'll squat feet straight. We'll turn the feet out to 30 degrees. Go and turn your feet out. We'll do one squat, don't do it. Then we'll turn our feet in and that's three squats, right? Okay. Turn your feet straight again. Right foot comes forward into a mini lunge. So go ahead and take that past the other foot. Leaving the foot, heel on the ground, feet straight. That would be number one in this series. We turn the feet out, both feet out, 30 degrees, one squat. And in 30 degrees, one squat. Then we would do the same thing with the left foot. right? So we have basically these triplets of foot straight, foot out, foot in. And then we start to alternate the patterns. Then we go wide and we go narrow. And this was developed by Yami Tikkanen in a, as a warm-up series and certainly has the inklings and smelling of Gary Gray and his brilliant work that he's done around feet. Now, the thing that we're going to add to it is to be able to look at, instead of my ability to say, hey, let's maintain back straightness, all I'm going to say is during that position, let's maintain the integrity of the feet. So Matt gets straight again, any squat width that he wants to. I don't care depth. I just want him to make sure that that ankle remains constant and in a good position, right? So he's still squatting where his knee feels stable, mm -hmm. his back is good, he's, he's in a position we say, can you play volleyball in this position? Sure. Yes, you can. And that's how we know we've been able to keep his upper back in extension good. And more importantly, stand back up, you saw no change in the organization or foot, architect or foot architecture. So as he squatted down, he didn't spin, he didn't collapse, there was no wobbliness to the ankle. The ankle remains a stable construct through the entire weight. And notice, 
I did not have to cue his knee. He's aware of his foot positioning. He's balanced from toe to heel. He remains, maintains the integrity of the ankle in the middle of the foot. And notice where his knee tracks to maintain that near the little toe, right? Now, that's great for that squat. So now turn your feet out 30 degrees. And the first thing that you saw he did collapsed. was collapsed. So now in this position, which is a common athletic position where I have to turn and open, right? Like, let's say, I don't know, maybe I was a thrower. Or a pulling guard. Right? Or yeah. a pulling guard or taking a step. I want to make sure that my athletes know how to take a step and don't collapse into a soft position. That navicular drop leaves me into a little bit more vulnerable, vulnerable shape. So stay back up again. Once again, before we even start out at 30 degrees, turn a little more, right? I'm now taking the hip through full range and I'm asking him to maintain his shape. So one of the ways that we can evaluate our athletes who are turning their feet out to squat, so we can say, okay, it's great. You turn your feet out because that opens your hips. We know that that may not transfer to a sport as well, but that's where you're squatting. Don't destroy your ankle. So you can't argue that your position's better because your position puts you into a rounded back, right? right. You can't tell me your position's better because it puts your shoulders forward. You can't tell me your position's better because it destroys your ankle and arch. So what we're trying to do is expand our conversation to be more nuanced. So turning the feet out fine, put that ankle in the middle of your foot. You have to work hard to pick it up here, don't you? Mm -hmm. When the foot is turned out, you have to work really hard to maintain the integrity of the ankle joint. Now, one squat to the best of your ability. Don't collapse your arch. You see that he was a little bit lazy on that side. This side's looking good, which is common after a surgery that the, the working side is working better than the on side. Right. Again, now he only can squat to a depth. He's get pulled onto his toes. I don't care about depth. I'm depth agnostic, but he's got to maintain the integrity. Arch has got to be engaged. Ankle in the middle of the foot. Stand back up. Good. Now turn the feet in 30 degrees. Oof. Now we're going to be at the limits of the ankle range of motion. So, but this is a position where we often block. Mm -hmm. I've got to be able to turn and block, right? We'll see people dunk, right? They need to be able to post. This is my Olympic lifting position where I turn that front foot in. Very common sport. I need to make sure that even if my foot is in, poop, I can still create stability through the ankle and maintain the integrity of the arch. So he turns his feet in 30 degrees. Well, that's not 30 degrees. That's straight. There you go. Now, <laughs> pick the arch up, put the ankle in the middle of the foot. Now he's in a good position. I don't care what depth he squats to, dangling preposition included. But notice he's got to work hard. This is the limit. He's blocked by the ankle. Now my athlete is working to warm up, and I actually have him squatting to the limits of his ankle range of motion. You feel that? Mm -hmm. So at least we're up against that wall. For NASCAR, we're, we're, we're rubbing the wall here. And that's yeah. what we're trying and to do. And rubbing's racing. The, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> right, so stand back up. So that would be the first shape. Now go ahead and take that right foot, put it forward in your left foot, any stance, but notice his left foot automatically dropped. So we're cueing him to say, hey, in this shape, I want you to be aware and maintain, oh, it's collapsing. So no change in this position happens. Weight is even through the, the toe to the heel. He's got to maintain that and stay even through the feet. He's only going to go as deep as he feels competent through the back. Can he play volleyball here? Are his arches engaged? Is his ankle in the middle? Good. Turn the feet out 30 degrees. Ends up being started a little bit of squirrely position, but you'll notice, stop, collapsed again, got to pick it up. Right now I have him being aware of this foot position, foot shape. He's working way hard. Nowhere in this have I even given him a cue about where the knee goes. All I've said is use your hip rotation to maintain the integrity of your foot. And you notice that you're automatically depth limited, so I don't have a conversation about, hey, you're reversing. Keep in mind of what's going on. Then we turn the feet in 30 degrees. So right foot forward, turn in 30. Give me one squat. So now his simple rehab, you'll notice weight has got to be evenly balanced through the feet. He maintains the integrity of his, of his foot position. We're doing a lot of intrinsic balance work without having to program a bunch of other BS. Left foot forward, right foot forward, wide stance, narrow stance. And then wide foot forward. That's right. So we end up in some very, very strange shapes where I'm asking you to stay balanced between your feet and working at the limits of the range of motion of your ankles. Now, the idea here is this also, oh, that foot collapse, take a look at your arch. You've got to look down be able to see that. There it is. Working hard to pick up the foot and put it in the middle so that I'm not overcorrecting because people have cued, oh, knees out. I'm, I'm like, what? Well, stop that. Let your foot yeah, right. be a foot. Now, what's interesting is that this builds up. If I'm pulling, I don't ever have to tell my athletes to your heels or change your bar path. What I say is I should be able to push through my foot through the whole foot the whole time until I get to the end. And now we're 
taking a low level air squat foot rebuilding skill and we're being able to lay it onto my Olympic lifting. I should be able to pull whoop, if I push press and I lose my arch during my push press, that's right. not a push press. Nope. You're jumping off of a soft air mattress. So as I load in that push press or push jerk, I don't care what your knees do, don't collapse your arch. And what you'll see is if I'm able to maintain that balance forward and back, let's do it for me. Just give me that first dip like you're going to drive something up over your head. Any stance works. Just show me the dip and pause. Just pause the bottom. As long as the ankle hasn't changed shape fundamentally, as long as the arch isn't collapsed, then you're not going to have to chase knees out. Now I've solved bar path problems and knee problems, hip problems, by saying I should be able to whoop, receive in that position which has been a continuation of the conversation we're having about rehab, right? So that I'm practicing this foot balance so that when I power clean, show me a receiving position of power clean, Maddie. Just give me that click. And what am I looking at as a coach? What's going on with the feet? If he's receiving and his feet are turned out, fine. So turn your feet out, let's say you receive there, but I better be able to pick that arch up and maintain that neutral, uh, subtalar neutral position. And this really just gets rid of a lot of the silly bullshit. So now we can start to use the foot and use the foot as a common thread through so many of our movement patterns. I get more quads, hips on, click, right? I don't have to use cues that the powerlifter is using around knees. Hey, I want to get my quads on early as possible. If I'm pushing through the ground from a center foot, it's all going to turn on correctly, right? I'm not going to, you know, go way forward and way back and shoot my butt up. It solves a lot of those problems. If I push press, as I jump and land, I start to create awareness and platforms around the feet so that they are in a position to do something else. Simultaneously, feet get stronger and I start to reduce air, movement errors. And then that becomes your natural movement that you're doing with your foot. Which is what we're trying to do in anyway. habits. Practice, practice, practice. And habit is the right word. I think sometimes we think skill transfer exercise. What we're really trying to do is change habit and behavior. Right. But working that into the warm up working that into rehab, working that into awareness, suddenly, even if I'm pushing on the rowing machine, that balanced position allows me to express natural extension of the hip as I move to the toe foot. But if I receive my full snatch, and this is my position, I want coaches and athletes to be able to say, hey, here's why that's not a great shape. Right. You've lost stability through the entire chain because you collapse the arch. Now is this something like as an athlete say like me on the uh, like doing a lot of rehab and since that's where I'm at um, you know doing this with just a strict air squat may be too much at this point yeah. is this something I could do supported with bands or a TRX or something like that? All can be done that way. It's right? not it's not a strength training exercise no. it's working on mobility. That's training. right so I'm using enough weight to again so if one of my one of my I think bugaboos about using external things to hold like TRX straps is I'm no longer having to support myself. Right. But you'll well, you'll sit too far back. That's you right. Just can't. But if I correct back to awareness in the feet, I can still hold something right. and maintain the awareness of where that foot position is. I'm also no longer limited by thinking, hey, where's the knee? In space, I'm going to squat to where I'm depth is comfortable. Even if I'm box squatting with a vertical shin, which is how we unload the ACL, I can still keep my weight balanced through my feet and still perform a pretty verticalized shin squat. Where I'm too far back on the heel, I'm too far on the toes. So ultimately, where I'm doing with the shin is a function of the upper body. So if my torso, right, you can vertically shin squat, that's as deep as you can go because your range, that's fine. You kept your weight balanced to the heel of the foot, right? Torso has to come forward more, and I can stand back up. If I want to go start to challenge the hip, challenge the ankle more, torso is upright, knees are going to come forward, but how forward? As long as I'm maintaining that foot. weight and foot, all I'm doing is adjusting torso position to have a different outcome for where my body needs to go. Now we have a common thread through the whole system. I like it. And you don't waste your time rehabbing, which is what it's about. You should come out of this with better hot foot action. That's what I'm going for. Hey, your feet. Why not rebuild? Matt Vincent, how can we find you? Thehate.com. The, thehate.com. Thehate.com. Now, the hate confuses people. H V I I I. So, Roman numeral eight letters, alphanumeric, as they say. So, I did what H7 yeah. minus S, which is heaven. Yeah. Right. It's nice. Yeah, that's my new brand. <laughs> that's good. See you tomorrow.